The new season of Alone has kicked off, and it's tougher than you can imagine. We're in Tasmania, Australia this time, where contestants not only face bone-chilling cold, but also a silence so deep it feels like death. Here, you'll feel loneliness magnified a hundred times, in a place so desolate even death itself might just walk in, shake its head, and walk out crying. Ten survival experts have come to challenge themselves in the wilderness, completely relying on their own skills to survive. The one who lasts the longest will walk away with a whopping $250,000 prize. First up, we have Gina, 52, who looks like a survival powerhouse. From her vibe, it seems like she's here to take the crown. Next, we have 22-year-old Jimmy, a young face in the Alone series. With such a youthful look, it's hard to say if he'll last even three days. Then there's Beck, 42, a school teacher using her winter break to test her survival skills. Know your math and science, and you'll be fearless anywhere. This saying is about to be tested on her. Our fourth contestant is Mike, 45, a man with a wealth of adventure experience. Coming here, though, might just be the wildest decision he's ever made. Kate, 41, steps up next, a wildlife biologist well aware of the notorious weather conditions of this place. Tasmania, being close to Antarctica, experiences extreme weather conditions. Proven by the tree stumps in the lakes, Peter, our sixth contestant, was dropped off in a barren forest, and the eeriness here has already got him spooked. Following him, we have Rob, 41, Michael, 43, Dwayne, 35, and Chris. All contestants arrived on day one, spaced far apart. Even shouting doesn't get them any response. They're all separated by water, meaning no walking over to meet each other. Chris started exploring the terrain around him, which is pretty much all swamp, making walking a real challenge. He's used to diving and fishing and has gathered plenty of food in the wild before, so he's feeling pretty confident. With almost 250 rainy days a year here, Chris realized not having a shelter would be a constant struggle. The nearby slopes and uneven weed-covered terrain mean clearing the area will take loads of time and effort. Chris plans to clear the branches and set up a tent shelter. He's found the best spot he could though he's not sure how he'll manage to sleep on this uneven ground. While setting up his shelter, he stumbled upon a huge wasp nest. Definitely not a good sign. A fallen nest could be life-threatening, but despite the danger, Chris thinks this spot is still the best. However, the presence of wasps is a real dilemma for him. Rob, stationed three kilometers away, is also picking a spot to set up his shelter. The scene in front of him is downright spooky. After walking for a bit, Rob feels incredibly thirsty. Being new here, he's feeling quite lost, so he greets the wilderness in the local language, giving himself some comfort and showing his respect for nature. Over at Gina's location, the scenery is stunning, and the ground under her feet is solid. She's really enjoying it, walking barefoot on the moss and feeling close to nature. She realizes that the goal isn't to conquer nature or defeat it. The only way to live comfortably in the wild is to be humble. Gina knows she needs to have her shelter up before sunset because the temperature here can drop to freezing at night. Beck has found herself in a spot with excellent access to water, which should make for an interesting winter break. Besides personal gear, contestants have to carry around 70 kilograms of camera equipment, and walking on this rough, uneven terrain is no easy task. Fortunately, Beck has found a great location for her shelter. While working, she constantly feels like someone's watching her. She scouts the area and finds a perfect spot for a toilet, though it reeks of Tasmanian devil. Catching one to eat would be a bonus. While she's pondering this, a branch falls and hits her on the head. This place is more dangerous than she expected. She could be knocked out by falling branches. Beck goes to the lake to fetch water planning to boil it while she builds her shelter. She keeps her fire starter in her bra for easy access. However, when she tries to start a fire, she realizes the fire starter from her bra is missing. Being able to make fire is crucial for cooking and staying warm in the wild, and without it, she might not last long. 
Meanwhile, Peter is exploring nearby. There's a large tidal flat here that gets flooded every time it rains heavily. He decides to fish first, hoping to enjoy a tasty fish dinner tonight. But thinking about the need to make fire and boil water makes him hesitant. Chris has already got a fire going and is boiling water, adapting well to the environment. There's a water source nearby that looks very clear, so Chris decides to try the water. Ah, that's hot. However, this risky move might cost him later. Rob has already started setting up his shelter between two large trees. He just places a log between them and covers it with a waterproof tarp. The space inside is quite roomy, making it a pretty decent temporary shelter. He even has a lake view right outside the door. Then, he gathered some plants to use as a mattress, hoping it would make sleeping warmer at night. Gina finally remembered she needed to set up her shelter. The wind picks up in the afternoon here, and Gina didn't bring a sleeping bag. Without a fire and a decent shelter tonight, she might literally freeze into an ice pop. It seems Gina plans to build her shelter here, close to the sea with the strong winds. If it rains heavily, her shelter could easily get flooded. After sorting out her shelter, Gina starts to settle in. She uses her clothes as kindling to start a fire. The sun is setting fast and Gina needs to get the fire going quickly. With the fire, she can boil water and stay warm. Relying on shivering to keep warm would quickly drain her body of energy. By evening, Rob has started boiling water, but he notices a lot of foam in it, which suggests it's not very clean. The temperature drops to 4 degrees at night, and he feels extremely thirsty. Ignoring the scalding heat of the freshly boiled water, he quickly gulps down a few sips. Meanwhile, it has started raining where Chris is. He lies next to the fire, watching the storm rage outside. Can he really sleep through this? At this point, every contestant is tense. The rain continuously flows off the shelter's roofs. Gina worries whether she has enough firewood. In this cold environment, without a sleeping bag, Gina relies solely on her clothes as a blanket. It really makes you wonder what she brought, considering she decided to leave behind her sleeping bag. In the middle of the night, Beck hears noises of animals crawling and various other strange sounds outside, which keep her awake, waiting for daylight with her eyes wide open. The next day, the morning in Tasmania is misty, almost magical. Rob's fire pit isn't flooded, but all the wood he collected is soaking wet. He shivered from the cold all night and woke up to find the shelter's roof had collected a lot of water. However, this water is drinkable. As long as it doesn't collapse the shelter, it can be used as stored drinking water. Then, Rob pulls out a photo of his family. From what I've seen on Alone, contestants who look at family photos don't usually last long. Beck got up early to start a fire. She felt horrible last night and was about to cry because she couldn't get the fire going. She also felt a bit sick and really missed her family. Rob struggled last night because it was too damp from the rain to start a fire and keep warm. He picked up his satellite phone. What's he going to do? Meanwhile, Beck sat by the sea, also picking up her satellite phone. Could it be that someone's ready to quit the competition just on the second day? The next day, Rob only drank a bit of plain water to stave off hunger. Everything was still drenched. After a whole night of rain, he felt extremely cold and was on the verge of giving up. Whenever he had a moment, he'd take out his family photo and pour over it. Thinking of not being able to be home with his adorable little daughter made him feel awful. After just a short while, the tears started flowing. Without hesitation, he used his satellite phone to call the producers and announce his withdrawal. Just the second day, and Rob quit because he missed his family. Gina spent the morning sunbathing by the lake. It's a dangerous spot, but she enjoyed it. The sun was plentiful where Gina was, so she had the biggest smile among all the contestants. Before coming here, Gina had put on about 50 pounds, but the extra fat made it hard for her to move. Today, Gina was scouting around her shelter, planning to find a good spot to build a long-term shelter. Australia has extreme weather with strong winds, and besides wildlife biting, even the trees can be deadly. There are rubber trees everywhere, and it's easy to get hit by falling branches, 
So, finding a good spot for a shelter is crucial here. Mike woke up to find his shoes full of water and just drank it all. It's like drinking foot wash. Mike's shelter was pretty basic, but he wasn't worried. He had his own survival strategy, prioritizing food over shelter. As for building a better shelter, well, he wasn't in a rush since he didn't really know how to improve it. The camera goes back to Beck. It rained all night, and her fire was out. Everything around made her uncomfortable. A tree near her shelter was gnawed at and pocked, which scared her. She thought about moving and then figuring out how to hunt for food. Beck kept looking for a good spot to set up her shelter. This open space looked good, but she always felt a chill down her spine. Maybe it was haunted. Frightened, she ran out of there and even tripped and fell. Frustrated, she went back to her shelter, but because she lost her fire starter, she couldn't start a fire. Without a fire, survival was tough, so she just quit the competition to avoid suffering here. Being the youngest contestant in the game, Jimmy was doing surprisingly well. He started a fire and then began moving wood to build a shelter. But after a few minutes, he started feeling hungry. He grabbed his fishing gear and headed to the lake, hoping to catch a fish to eat. The ground was slippery and covered with lots of dead wood. He accidentally slipped and fell. But eventually, he found a good spot and sat down to start his fishing adventure, hoping for a big catch. Chris noticed bubbles on the water's surface and guessed they might be crayfish. So, he hurried back to his shelter to make some fishing tools. Soon, Chris was ready and went back to the water to try his luck at catching crayfish. Peter woke up with his face covered in mud, apparently having rolled out of his shelter during the night. He was also troubled by the rain. It rains here 255 days out of the year, and Peter's clothes and other items were soaked. It was a rough start, and he had to rebuild his shelter. Gina was in great spirits, even dancing in front of the camera for some entertainment. With such a positive attitude, she's bound to succeed at anything. Gina had already picked out a spot to build her shelter and now needed to gather some wood. She had her eyes on a centuries-old towering tree, thinking of chopping it down to build her shelter. Using such large wood, was she planning to build a palace in the wilderness? Gina planned to build a long trapezoidal shelter, which is simple to make and spacious. A good choice. Mike's location was also great. He went to the shore to pick up dry wood, which often contains small bugs that make excellent fishing bait. Trout really love this kind of bait. The underwater environment here is quite complex, making it somewhat challenging to catch fish. So, Mike decided to build a raft to fish in deeper waters. Building a raft was definitely a big project, but to have a chance at catching fish, Mike was willing to do it. While making the raft, nearby crows kept cawing nonstop. If he could catch a crow, that wouldn't be too bad either. Near his shelter, Peter explored the area to try setting up traps to catch some protein. There were many small kangaroo tracks on the ground, and Peter hoped to catch a few to try. Meanwhile, Jimmy was doing a COVID-19 test in his shelter. Bet you didn't expect that. Even in the middle of nowhere, he couldn't escape the fate of getting tested. While waiting, he decided to take a nap. When he woke up and turned on his flashlight, he was shocked to see two lines on the test, positive. Despite being cut off from the world, he still managed to catch COVID. When the doctor came to check on him, even wearing goggles, it was confirmed. Jimmy really had caught COVID-19. The doctor was pretty helpless about it. Jimmy had fled to the wilderness, but even there, he couldn't escape the virus. I never would have thought that just on the second day, three contestants would already be out of the competition. As evening came, it started to rain lightly. What else might they encounter next? On the third day, Mike woke up complaining. He said he had a tough night since it's really uncomfortable here when it rains. He had been hungry for two days, but his body hadn't changed much because he had intentionally gained some extra weight before coming to store up fat. Mike slapped his belly, making funny duang duang sounds. Then he went to the lake to bathe. Even though he was drinking water from his shoes, he was still particular about personal hygiene. 
After washing up, he headed into the woods to make a fishing rod. He chopped down a straight branch, perfect for the job. He tied a fishing line to one end of the branch. With the fishing tool ready, he needed bait. Usually, you can find some larvae under the bark. He didn't have to chop much to hit the jackpot. Mike found a larva under the bark. If he could catch larvae like this every day, catching a big fish was only a matter of time. Mike used the larva as bait, hooked it, and started fishing. While he was at it, Mike kept on collecting larvae, knowing they directly impacted how often he could fish. With enough larvae, he wouldn't have to worry about not having fish to eat. But while chopping trees for them, he almost chopped his own leg off. It's not that easy to find those bugs after all. Kate woke up in her shelter, all smiles. Seems like she's having a good time here. It's been two days, and she only started feeling hungry today. She tried looking for some food in the forest. I love botany, and I love plants, and I've, like, I learned a lot about bush foods, traditional foods. I'll be able to hopefully uh, procure a good source of food, even if the hunting isn't going well. Finding some edible plants. Their roots were packed with starch and slightly sweet. Good enough to fill her up if she found enough. After breakfast, Kate headed to the shore to make some fishing gear, digging up worms for bait. She sat there for half an hour with no luck and decided to try a different spot. Even with worms, fishing wasn't easy. Chris was making a racket early in the morning, but with each contestant spaced about five or six kilometers apart, no one could hear him. He went into the woods to gather edible stuff. He dreamt of endless chicken legs and bread last night. But today, he was stuck gnawing on grass. Poor guy. After breakfast, he started looking for some protein, hoping to catch some game. He wandered around and found a big hole in a dead tree, but no bugs. Food was hard to come by. With mountains and rivers around, the only thing missing was the food Chris was looking for. He tried the creek, expecting to find small crabs or fish, but for some reason, all the animals seemed to have vanished wherever he went. Peter was also searching for food in the dense jungle, seeing no signs of animals, only plants thriving. After three days of hunger, he finally found some mushrooms on the ground but couldn't tell if they were edible. At this point, he didn't know what to do. At 11 a.m., Kate checked her fishing rod and luckily caught an eel weighing about a pound, making her the first contestant to successfully hunt. The eel wasn't big, but it was enough for a hearty dinner. After cleaning, the eel was only the size of a pot lid, but it was a hard-earned source of protein. Kate isn't a fan of eel, but she didn't have much choice here. She quickly finished it off, struggling with the strong fishy taste without any spices. It was probably the most disgusting thing she'd ever eaten. Dwayne also headed outside to look for food. He found some bugs in the deadwood, and instead of using them as fish bait like you'd expect, Dwayne just popped them straight into his mouth. But the bug's pungent smell was so intense it burned his tongue. He said those bugs tasted worse than crap. Uh, has he actually tried it? Then, by the shore, he spotted some tiny berries. They were really small, but better than nothing. Suddenly, a downpour started and Dwayne noticed a hole in his tent. That's when he realized he needed to upgrade his shelter. Chris was having a rough time too. He hadn't finished building his shelter or found any food. He was busy weaving a fishing net, which might be more convenient here than fishing with a rod. Making a net is meticulous work, so Chris was moving pretty slow. Meanwhile, Mike started gathering wood to build his shelter, but his fishing setup from this morning hadn't budged. He guessed there were no fish around, so, he planned to build a raft to fish farther out. Making a raft was a big project, needing lots of materials and a ton of energy, especially since he hadn't eaten in three days and had to keep working. Every stick for the raft had to be smoothed down to avoid ripping the waterproof fabric. It looks like Mike was aiming to build a canoe. Chris finally got his fishing gear ready. He ran to the shore, and it didn't take long before there was a tug on his line. Excited, Chris yanked up the rod and sure enough, he caught a fish. After three days without food, he finally had a successful hunt. The fish wasn't big, but it was enough for a day's meal. With this catch, Chris felt more confident about surviving here. He happily took his fish back to his shelter. 
Peter still hadn't found anything to eat. He took his axe and headed out into the wild, which was super muddy. It was so slippery he could have fallen, and his own mother wouldn't recognize him. After wandering around for a while and finding nothing to eat, he complained all the way back to camp. Not paying attention, he even took a nasty fall. Just looking at his pained expression, you could tell it hurt a lot. Once back at his shelter, Peter just packed up his stuff and quit the competition. It was only day three, and already four contestants had dropped out. This season's contestants aren't very strong. Looks like just having food could easily win you the championship. On the fourth day, around 1 a.m., Gina was boiling water in her shelter because she had a terrible stomach ache that kept her from sleeping. She started sharing her past experiences with the camera. At the age of 38, she was pregnant but was diagnosed with breast cancer. The doctors urged her to terminate the pregnancy due to the life-threatening risks, but Gina chose to continue with it. Tragically, her child also developed cancer at the age of three and later died. Overwhelmed by grief, Gina broke down in tears. As a mother, the last thing she wanted was to see her child go. When the sun rose, Gina seemed to have regained her composure. Today was her daughter's birthday, and she hoped the vibrant scenery around her would offer some comfort. Early in the morning, Mike was up watching birds. There were a lot of them in the trees, but unfortunately, he hadn't brought a bow and arrow. Today, Mike planned to continue working on his raft. Only by finishing the raft could he fish in deeper waters. He quickly assembled the structure of the raft, which was just big enough for one person, but he still needed some small branches to perfect it. In the woods, he spotted a large tree covered in scratch marks, likely from a large tree climbing animal. Mike decided to venture deeper into the forest to look for wildlife. He analyzed the most likely paths the animal would take and set up a camera to see if he could capture anything. Today, Dwayne planned to build a permanent shelter. He chopped a lot of wood and crafted a framework, aiming to build a log cabin shelter. While chopping, he nearly got hit by his own ax, which left him sweating bullets. Dwayne's shelter was built haphazardly with unsecured wood. Feeling something was off with only half the shelter done, he worried about its stability and his safety. After waking up, Michael found a snail on his tent. He drank a bowl of water for breakfast and then headed into the forest with his backpack. He discovered a type of grass on the ground, the roots of which were edible. Now, contestants who hadn't caught any fish were eating this grass. After days without food, even grass tasted good to him. The paths in the forest were complex, making it easy to get lost. Michael kept walking, probably unaware of how far he'd gone. Fortunately, he had a compass. As long as he kept the right direction, he could find his way back. Next to his shelter, Mike described the local conditions. It rained almost every day, and after a week, he was starting to get familiar with the place. He had been preparing his raft for fishing and had also made a fishing rod. He went to the lake's edge, and with his fishing rod, he finally tried lure fishing. Unfortunately, it started to rain heavily. Michael was still climbing through the jungle. He'd been at it for hours, and even with a compass, he still ended up on the wrong path. If he didn't make it back to his shelter before dark, not even a miracle could save him. Luckily, he finally found the right way. After a whole day in the jungle, Michael decided to turn in early. Day five rolled around, and Mike headed out first thing in the morning to check the cameras he set up last night. Sure enough, he caught some wildlife on film, which was a good break for him. He decided to rig up a trap to hunt these animals, whipping up a net out of some rope. That was pretty badass. Kate was just sitting by the shore, spacing out. The weather here was getting colder by the day. She had been here so long and had only managed to eat fish once. The rest of the time, she could only munch on some berries and roots. These berries were tiny, and even picking them all day wouldn't fill you up. But that was all Kate had to work with. Dwayne finally got the frame of his shelter up. All he needed to do was throw a waterproof tarp over it, and he'd have himself a shelter. So far, Dwayne's shelter was the best. It rained every day here, leaving them not much chance for hunting. Luckily, Dwayne already had a shelter. 
Though he didn't have any food, he was still pretty comfortable. Whenever they got bored, each contestant would share a bit about their family. Dwayne mentioned that he had a family of five back home. His older brother was in jail. His older sister had already married and had kids. His dad was a drunk and his mom was a gambler. That's why he chose to wander the wilderness. Today, Gina just reinforced her original shelter a bit and then built a bed. It wasn't until evening that she finally finished the bed, but lying on it felt incredibly comfortable. Day six came and Gina was up early showing off her bed, probably because she had a great night's sleep. Suddenly, she saw something fishing in the water, turned out to be a platypus. The ecosystem here was really thriving, so seeing a platypus wasn't that weird. Chris was still working on his fishing net, a task that had already taken him two days. His fishing gear wasn't ready yet, but he still needed to eat. So he headed into the jungle to hunt some small game for today's meal. He was so determined, he even dared to crawl into a log bigger than himself, not caring about the potential danger inside. But after searching for a long time, he came back empty-handed. Not long after, he ran off to fish again. After all, he had caught a fish just two days prior. He set up four fishing rods, but sadly, this time around, there was no action. Fishing wasn't as easy as he thought. Mike finally got his net ready and headed to the jungle to set up his traps. He predicted where the net would fall on the ground and set up an automatic device in the right spot. If prey touched the food above, it would trigger the mechanism and the net would drop, trapping the animal. It took him all day, but he finally got it set up. That night, Mike couldn't sleep in his shelter, constantly checking for any activity at the trap. There was indeed movement at the trap. Mike rushed to check, but found no prey in the trap. He checked the camper and realized the opossum had been at the edge of the net. So close, yet so far. It was the early hours of day seven when Dwayne's shelter started to leak. It was pouring outside, and the sound of the rain made it impossible for Dwayne to sleep. Early in the morning of the seventh day, Chris went back to the shore to fish. If he couldn't catch fish consistently, he wouldn't be able to survive here. Chris still hadn't built a shelter and was living in a tent. He was organizing ropes in the camp, but he was incredibly impatient. Not having caught any food, he was impatient with everything now, clueless about what he was even doing here. On the eighth day, Chris was at the shore early, talking about his recent struggles. He hadn't caught any food, and the environment was making him feel incredibly lonely. His confidence was waning, and he was thinking about quitting, but he wanted to hold on as long as possible. Just as he was worrying about food, he suddenly saw the fishing line move. Chris quickly lifted the rod and landed a big fish. This fish brought him a great deal of hope for survival. Holding the fish, Chris couldn't wait to eat it. The fish's belly was full of eggs, which Chris ate raw. Then he cooked the cleaned fish in an iron pot. He savored today's fish soup, licking every bone clean. Gina was improving her shelter. She added an extra layer of fencing outside her tent to shield from the wind and rain. Next, she was planning to build a door for her shelter. She first secured a row of ropes and then gathered a lot of grass. Maybe she was planning to weave a grass door. Everyone else was busy building shelters or hunting, but Dwayne was sliding down a slide because he had already built a perfect shelter. Dwayne's area was rich in resources. He found a great fishing spot and decided to give it a try. He initially thought to use a bottle as a float, but it was too big, so he opted for a button from his clothing. After making his fishing gear, Dwayne started fishing but caught nothing, wasting such a great spot. After eating, Chris was comfortably lying on the shore sunbathing. He thought the place was beautiful and perfect for swimming. Swimming here, hopefully, he won't end up feeding the fish. The water was filled with uneven deadwood, and just thinking about the color of the water was terrifying. Gina's situation was more interesting. She said when she first arrived, she weighed 96 pounds, but now she has gained so much weight, she can't even button her pants. Eating grass every day and still gaining weight, what's the logic in that? Gina continuously collected grass and leaves around her shelter to weave a grass door. 
She worked from morning until night, and finally the grass door was ready. It's day nine now. Mike has been quite busy lately, making a fishing rod, hunting traps, and a raft. Whenever he had time, he would explore the jungle, but he never found anything. This was where he set up his traps. Mike reviewed last night's camera footage. Although animals passed by, they didn't trigger the trap, possibly because the area was too open. Mike planned to make the animals follow a set path by sticking a row of branches in the ground to guide them towards the trap, hoping this would help him catch some food. It often rains here, and Mike's fire pit was outside his shelter. He planned to improve his shelter to protect the fire. The jungle had many large trees and the bark was very useful. Mike took a piece of bark, which could be used not only as a door but also as a rain shelter. But the bark was very heavy and it took a lot of effort to carry it back to his shelter. Dwayne, as usual, went out looking for food but returned empty-handed. Not giving up, Dwayne went to the shore to fish. This time, he finally caught a fish. He hadn't eaten for eight days and this fish literally saved his life. Let's look at Michael's situation. He built a shelter in the jungle. Although it only had one wall, it was already pretty impressive. He kept improving this wall as if a shelter was just one wall. After getting back to his shelter, Dwayne started to make a fire to cook his fish. It was his first attempt at making a fire in the wild, but even with a fire starter, he couldn't get it going. I thought he wouldn't be able to eat that fish today. But what he did next really blew my mind. He just picked up the raw fish and started chomping down on it. Michael was sorting out his hat and, believe it or not, there were bugs growing in it. Oh my goodness, I can only imagine what his hair must be like. Now, it's day 10. This morning, Michael planned to take a bath. He even made a little bath bag out of a waterproof fabric. He heated up some stones, filled the bag with water, and then threw the hot stones in to warm it up. Bath time was ready to go. Kate picked some leaves from the forest that turned out to be super useful. She rubbed them together by the shore and quickly created a bunch of foam. These leaves could be used as soap. After washing her hands, she went back into the jungle to look for bugs. Underneath the deadwood and bark, there might be beetle larvae. The environment here is very primitive, with mushrooms on the ground spraying out powder. But it seems like there aren't many animals around. While working, Kate accidentally hurt her hand, but she found some fern that could treat minor hand injuries. Dwayne was sunbathing when he suddenly made a call to the show's crew to quit the competition. Now, he's just waiting for the staff to come and pick him up. His shelter was arguably the best built among all the contestants. It's really a pity he's quitting after all this work, especially now on day 10. Meanwhile, Mike was playing golf. I mean, is this wilderness survival or a wilderness holiday? Last night, he finished making a raft by sewing waterproof fabric onto a frame. This raft was his hope for fishing in deeper waters. After getting everything ready, Mike got on his little boat and tried to paddle out to deeper water. But the next second, the boat just capsized, sending him and the raft straight into the water. His fate is unknown. Let's check in with Gina. She woke up really hungry today, so her main goal is to find some food. Meanwhile, Mike struggled back to shore after his raft sank way faster than he expected. All those days spent building it, and it was totally useless. Chris is still not done with his fishing net. It looks like he's given up on it. He's been trying to find food in the jungle, but no luck so far. He found a small pond and tried fishing there, but you could see right to the bottom. It was empty. I have no idea why he even bothered. After spending half the day searching the jungle and finding nothing, Chris went back to his shelter to zone out. Then he heard a plane fly overhead. Seeing a sign of modern civilization in this remote place almost brought him to tears. He couldn't calm down for a long time and just kept talking to the camera about his thoughts. Not even caring if his fishing rods caught anything because he was all caught up in whether that plane was there to check on him. Last night, Kate heard noises around her shelter, so she went out to check and thought it might be a small animal digging. Today she followed the trail but didn't find a single animal hair. She headed back to camp to fish and shared her stories while she fished. Gina didn't find any protein today either. She just took some grass she was using to fix her door, boiled it with a bit of salt, 
and made a tasty vegetable soup. After eating, Gina sat in the sun but suddenly felt nauseous, probably from eating just grass and not getting enough nutrients. Can she keep up with this survival challenge? It's nighttime now and Kate is out exploring, trying to find any nearby prey. She did spot a few small animals up in the trees, but she wasn't looking to hunt. She just wanted to know who her neighbors were. Michael didn't get much sleep with the sounds of possums outside his shelter. He recognized their calls immediately, but when he went out to check, he saw no sign of them. It's day 11 now, and hearing the possums again, Michael decided to build a trap. He chopped some wood, picked a good spot, and started setting up his trap, sticking sticks into the ground and setting up a one-way door. Over there, Mike is tweaking his raft again. He fixed up the tail end of it, and now he's gearing up for a second test run. Fingers crossed it works this time. Mike got the raft into the water and cautiously climbed aboard. If it sinks again, he might just call it quits. Luckily, he made it to deeper waters this time. He dropped his fishing hook into the water and kept paddling around, but no fish were biting. As he rowed, he scanned the water and spotted an island. He landed and took a look around but didn't see any signs of game just a big tree and lots of half-dead grass. Chris slept until noon before finally getting up. He headed to the shore to check his fishing gear and found nothing on his four rods. Just as he was about to leave, he noticed one of the lines moving. Carefully lifting the rod, he really hit the jackpot and caught a fish. That one fish could keep Chris going for days. Full and hydrated, with nothing much else to do, Chris couldn't help but start missing his family. When you're hungry, all you think about is food, but once you're fed, you think of home. After rowing for hours without a catch, Mike realized how tiring fishing like this was. He decided to switch up his strategy and head back to shore to fish. At night, back in his shelter, Mike reflected on his day, focusing on how to reduce his energy expenditure and how to get more food. Day 12 rolled around and out of the blue, Chris announced he was quitting the competition and called the crew right away. It was quite unexpected, especially since he had caught more fish than anyone else, albeit just two. By day 13, Mike was the contestant who had made the most stuff, but his hunting skills were pretty mediocre. If he could just manage to get some food, he'd stand a good chance at winning. He'd made a great fishing rod, but maybe the bait was off because he hadn't caught anything. He also set traps for hunting, but kept missing his quarry. Even his attempts at fishing from the raft came up empty. Today, Mike headed back into the jungle to check on his traps. No luck. The trap hadn't caught anything. He reviewed the footage from his camera and saw a small kangaroo had passed by. But it didn't spring the trap. All Mike could do was give a wry smile at his fruitless efforts. Kate spruced up her shelter and crafted a small wooden bed which she topped with some dry hay for a much come fire sleep. She also stored plenty of firewood in her shelter, ready for use at night. After setting everything up, Kate headed into the jungle with a stick, looking for more resources. So far, she had only managed to catch one eel and had been surviving on grass or enduring hunger at other times. Today, she planned to dig for worms to use as bait for fishing. With a shovel in hand, she actually found quite a few worms, which are great sources of protein not just for eating, but also for fishing. Mike had yet another fruitless day. He returned to his shelter looking very hungry and tired, but he hasn't stopped trying to find food. The traps he set still hadn't caught anything, so he decided to test them himself. He went back to the trap and tested it with his backpack, confirming it worked, which left him puzzled as to why it wasn't catching any prey. On day 14, Michael ventured back into the jungle. He had set up a hunting trap here on day 11 and planned to improve it today. After his adjustments, the trap looked a lot sturdier, though if a large animal struggled, it might still break free since the stakes weren't very secure. Still, it was better than nothing. After finishing, Michael installed a gate on the trap, hoping it would finally catch something, but he thought the chances were slim without any bait. By day 15, it started to drizzle. Kate was fishing by the shore, which was her only way to get protein at this point, but the fish were hard to catch. Just as she was getting frustrated, one of her fishing lines moved. Excitedly, she reeled in another eel. The others were catching trout, but eels seemed to favor Kate, who didn't even like them. 
This eel weighed about a pound, enough for a full meal. Kate started cleaning it right there on the shore. Eels are slippery, so she sprinkled some charcoal ash on it to make handling easier. She then cooked it directly on a pan lid, since frying was simpler than grilling. Boiling made the eel too fishy, but frying made it tastier. This rare protein-rich meal was delicious, even tastier than the last, but the greasiness made her feel a bit sick. Suddenly, the production crew's boat appeared nearby, a sure sign that another contestant was about to drop out of the competition. The crew's boat came over to Mike's side, just for a routine medical checkup on the contestants. For a moment, everyone thought Mike was about to drop out of the competition. After all, he had put so much effort into his stay here. It would have been a shame if he had quit. Turns out, Mike's weight had dropped by 11%. He definitely needs to eat more. As evening rolled around, Mike was lost in thought inside his shelter. Every night, he would sit there listening for any sounds from the traps. If he caught any animals, he could rush over immediately. Day 16 kicked off with Mike checking his traps first thing in the morning. He wasn't really hopeful, just doing a routine check, probably because he had faced too many disappointments already. As he approached the trap, he found it had been triggered. Although it hadn't caught any prey, this excited him a lot. He checked the camera playback and saw that some animal had visited. It had slipped under the net and then triggered the mechanism. This was the closest he had gotten to catching something. What a pity. Gina's shelter looked like a giant bird's nest. Just after getting up, she saw a platypus foraging in the water. Ready to head out herself, Gina knew she had to get some protein if she was going to last the full 90 days. In the jungle, she found a fern tree and collected a large piece of its core. Back at the shelter, she chopped off the excess parts and boiled it in a pot. This pot of dark stew. Would you dare to try it? Well, Gina enjoyed it a lot. By day 18, Michael was perfecting the automatic door on his trap. He hadn't caught any animals, and it wasn't just the door that was the problem. It might also be because he hadn't used any bait. Without any food caught, Michael lost the motivation to keep working. He sat down, frustrated, and soaked up some sun. Day 20 came around, and Gina checked the fishing traps she had set up the night before. The bait was still there, which confirmed that there really weren't many fish in the water. Fishing was just down to luck now. Soon enough, Gina's fishing rod started to move. She had caught a fish, a small trout. Although it was just a little one, it was the only protein Gina had managed to get in 20 days. She fried the fish straight in a pan, its aroma filling the air. A bit of salt on top, and this fish became a top-tier wilderness delicacy. Some are happy, some are not so much. Mike hadn't caught a fish in 20 days despite setting up plenty of hooks. Just his luck, really bad. When he pulled on one of the lines, to his surprise, there actually was a fish on it, a eel. Mike quickly tried to pull it to shore. Unfortunately, just when he thought he had it, the eel slipped off the hook and escaped. Seeing his disappointed face, it's hard to tell how much longer he can hold out in the wild. Now it's day 21, and only four contestants are left. The weather is great today. Kate went down to the shore early to take a bath. After her bath, she felt refreshed. Mike kept improving his shelter, but without any food, he just didn't have the energy to continue working. Mike decided to try his luck fishing in deeper waters again. After setting the hooks, he rode out. This time a fish bit the hook quickly. Mike started to reel in very nervously really hoping to catch this fish, but after a long struggle, there was no fish. Gina was digging in the ground, pulling up moss and finding lots of worms. I thought she'd use them for fishing, but she just fried a worm in a pan. After tasting it, she found it surprisingly good, so she fried up the rest and that was her meal for the day. Michael checked his trap again. It had been triggered but caught nothing. He helplessly reviewed the camera footage. There were animals nearby, but catching them was tricky. Michael then went to the shore to forage. He found lots of water grass rich in vitamin C and planned to cook some for his lunch. After eating some grass, he felt even hungrier and really needed some protein. It's day 22 now. This morning, Kate was woken up by birds chirping outside her shelter. 
She ties a knot on a rope every day to keep track of her days here. After waking up, she just stares at the sky by the shore, not really knowing what she's supposed to do here. How does she manage to stay so hungry? It seems like her task is to just talk to herself by the shore every day. If this keeps up, I might start thinking this show is fake. Gina caught a fish by the shore. It had been three days since her last fish meal. She swore to catch at least one fish every day. Gina's got her food situation sorted for today. She's chilling by the shore, sipping on some water, watching a platypus forage in the water. This platypus has become her only real buddy here. At least it's something entertaining to watch. After sitting for a bit, she started feeling a bit peckish, so she began to prep the fish she caught today. It wasn't a big one, but still a decent source of protein that'll cover her needs for the day. Kate, on the other hand, hasn't caught a fish in ages. She's drunk loads of water, but is still starving. She couldn't take it anymore and called up the show's crew to quit. I can't believe she quit halfway through, after starving for so long without any prize money. Of course, if she was trying to lose weight, then I've got nothing to say. Day 23. Only three contestants are left. Mike is out looking for fishing bait, and luckily found a big pile of worms under some grass. Looks like fishing might be promising today. Gina hasn't cooked the fish she caught this morning yet. She tore off a strip to eat raw, and plans to save the rest for breakfast tomorrow. Just one fish. Can't she just eat well tonight and rest up for more fishing tomorrow? Mike plans to fish at night. After setting up his hooks, he's just sitting by the shore waiting. He's always hustling for food, but luck hasn't been on his side. Tonight, we'll see if he catches anything. Soon, there's some movement on the hook. Mike checks it out. The rod's all bent out of shape. What's he still looking at the shore for? Just reel it in already. In the middle of the night, no less. And now, he's thinking about diving in with a net to catch fish. Luckily, he ends up catching an eel. Finally, some luck for the guy. He hasn't eaten in days, and this eel has made him super happy. Tonight's midnight snack is sorted. Mike just fries up the eel right there in a pan. This eel feast is delicious and should keep him going for a few more days. Day 24. Michael's back at the shore first thing in the morning, picking at grass to eat. He's been eating grass every day. If he keeps this up, he'll probably quit the competition soon. Wouldn't it be better to spend some time fishing instead of munching on grass? After breakfast, he decides to look for a good fishing spot. The paths here are tough, especially when you're already hungry and burning through whatever energy you have left. But with a $250,000 prize on the line, he's got to push himself to the max to get some food. Michael hit up this sweet spot at a pretty river bend, trying his luck with fishing. Perfect spot, but guess what? His bait was just some water grass. If he ever managed to catch a fish, he thought he could eat for two to four days, but no luck so far. Meanwhile, Gina got up early, checked her fishing gear by the shore, and noticed some ripples in the water. Thinking it was the platypus again, Got him. Oh, you're a beauty. She was surprised to pull up a fish that was way bigger than yesterday's catch. Her fishing strategy of just setting up and waiting really paid off, making her super excited. She's been feasting on meat continuously, turning her luck around and boosting her chances of winning big time. Mike was fishing the same way. He thought his line was snagged at the bottom, but it turned out an eel had taken the bait. Awesome, right? Just had eel for a midnight snack, and now he's set for an eel breakfast too. Right now, it's a tight race between Mike and Gina. Mike's even planning to make smoked eel. He peeled off some bark, made a cylindrical setup, hung it over the fire, and smoked the eel inside the bark. Gotta say, the idea was spot on. Michael was pacing around frustrated. He went fishing in the morning but caught nothing, probably because he had no real bait. Now, Mike's got enough food and he's really missing his family. He's eager to go back, but he knows winning here means a lot more when he returns home. He plans to save the smoked eel and enjoy it slowly. Gina, on her part, is living comfortably too, sitting by the fire at night, singing songs. Well-fed competitors sure have a lot in common. They only think about everything else when they're not worried about food. Mike's eel has been smoking for hours and looks ready. He took a bite, and man, it was delicious. The smoked color looked stunning and the preparation was perfect. He just couldn't stop eating. What surprises will they bring us next? Day 26 rolls around, 
and three contestants are left. Mike guessed the numbers by the shore early in the morning, thinking someone might head home in the next few days. He feels really close to the championship, but knows he needs to keep finding food to extend his stay. While checking his fishing traps, Mike felt a strong pull on the line, guessing he must have caught something. He grabbed a net and prepared to dive in. The water was freezing cold. The last contestant who stripped down for a bath went home, and now Mike, diving in, screamed from the icy chill. The fish hook was dragging at the bottom, and he had to follow the line to find the fish in the blood red water. Only the guilty wouldn't dare dive in here. Gina is all over the place on a piece of wood, totally hyped up because she's been eating fish for two straight days and has regained her strength. She mentioned she's had six fish in the last four days. Today, she did a little fishy dance to celebrate. After dancing, Gina went to the shore to set up her bait, leaning on a fishing rod. With that, she's pretty much guaranteed meat every day. She noticed the water levels rising, but that doesn't stop her from fishing. As long as she can find bait, there's no worry about running out of fish. On the other hand, Mike was in the water for about 15 minutes and still couldn't get his fish hook unstuck. It was tangled up in a mess of submerged logs and debris, making it impossible to retrieve. Mike decided he won't fish there anymore. Michael is having the toughest time, hasn't caught any fish, and doesn't know how to find good bait. He's been cold and hungry every day. On day 24, he explored eastward where he found it incredibly beautiful with lots of animal tracks. If he's lucky, he might find some meat to eat there. Today, he plans to move over there because he also discovered it's rich in eel. Michael packed up his fishing hooks and dismantled his hunting traps. He went back to his shelter to pack up all his belongings. Moving will take a lot of energy. Plus, he'll need to set up a new shelter. If he doesn't find fish after moving, Michael might soon starve out of the competition. He's carrying a heavy suitcase through the jungle, a journey so draining he could eat 10 bowls of rice and it still wouldn't be enough. It's been a tough trek. Michael dragged his suitcase here, just a kilometer or two, but the path was brutal. He still needs to go back for more stuff. The suitcase is moved, but he hasn't started on the shelter yet. Tonight, he'll have to make do with staying in the old shelter. It started raining at night. Gina went to check her fishing traps by the shore and sure enough, caught another fish. Her fishing spot is just amazing. The fish was big enough for a splendid late night meal. But being conscious of sustainability, Gina decided to save it for tomorrow to make it last a few more days. Day 27 rolled around and Mike was sitting at the entrance of his shelter, feeling pretty bummed about his current fishing spot. So today, He's planning to take his raft to another spot to try his luck there. He's decided to spend all his time fishing because getting fish daily is the only way he can keep going. But the weather's not great, it's really windy, and the raft is super shaky in the water. Heading out now might just flip the raft over. Mike waited for over an hour and noticed the weather wasn't getting any worse. It was time to get fishing. He paddled his raft out to deeper waters and cast his fishing line in a spot where the water opens up, then kept rowing. Even though it's a lot of work, it beats just sitting around waiting for a miracle. Mike made it to a small island in the middle of the river to try his luck fishing there. Meanwhile, Michael was busy moving his stuff to a new location. After packing up, he was ready to hit the road again. Gina's shelter is looking pretty prime right now. She's super happy today because she's still got fish to eat. She tossed the fish onto a frying pan to grill. The fish wasn't big, but it was enough for a hearty breakfast. I mean, why do they all love grilled fish so much? Wouldn't it be more filling to make a fish soup and throw in some mushrooms and wild veggies? Gina polished off the fish in no time. It wasn't enough to fill her up. Mike kept exploring around here, planning to fish in this spot. The river looked pretty shallow here, and if there were any fish, he'd see them right away. Why waste time here? Soon enough, it started raining. He had to head back to the shelter. Who knows how long this rain will last? If it gets too heavy, he might not be able to get back at all. This trip out was pretty much a waste of time. Caught nothing and got soaked in the rain. Mike's luck with fishing was pretty bad today, but hey, at least he didn't flip his raft in the water. 
once back at the shelter, he couldn't wait to just lie down and rest. After all, there's not much you can do on a rainy day. Day 28, and Gina was feeling really down. She missed her daughter like crazy. Even though she's been in the wild for a while, just thinking about her daughter made her break down. She says it's not too lonely out here, but honestly, she's feeling super isolated. Michael has been moving for two days straight. The distance isn't far, but it's really tiring to walk. Thankfully, he finally got all his stuff moved. The place looks different here. Hopefully, Michael will have better luck fishing. He still needs to find a good spot to set up his shelter. The jungle here is pretty open, so Michael decided to set up his tent here while he was clearing the trees. Yes, there. I think it's bruised already. Talk about bad luck. But hey, it's just some scratches. No big deal. It hurts like heck, but it's nothing serious. Michael set up his tent, so now he's got a place to stay dry and block the wind tonight. Mike sat by the shore all day, and suddenly his fishing gear made a noise. It was a small trout. He was over the moon, quickly scooping up the fish. It looks like setting up a permanent fishing rig is really the way to go. Seems like every time the contestants get food, it's through this method. Mike made a big pot of trout soup. It was his first time eating trout, and having the meat and then the soup really filled him up. What a great day it was. Now it's day 29, and it's raining again. Michael plans to just lie around in the shelter all day because saving energy is crucial for finding food later. Sleeping is for saving energy, and saving energy is for finding food. So sleeping equals finding food. Makes sense, right? I can't argue with that. Michael spent a ton of energy moving here to fish better, but ever since he arrived, it's been raining nonstop. He's cooped up in the shelter and finally just broke down and cried. Now it's day 30, and only three contestants are left. Michael woke up to find frost everywhere. It seems like the temperature dropped about 10 degrees overnight. There's a thick fog all around. When the sun came up, Michael made a makeshift fishing rod and went to the shore to fish. Maybe it was because his rod was too primitive. Or maybe he didn't use the right bait, but he didn't catch anything. Disappointed, he headed back to the shelter feeling lost and even regretting moving here since he hasn't caught any fish. Today, the doctors are checking the contestants. Mike is super nervous. Even though he's been eating fish regularly, if his health check doesn't pass, he'll still be forced to leave the competition. Luckily, aside from being a bit skinny, he's pretty much okay. Gina, though she's lost 30 pounds, is also overall in good shape. The biggest surprise has got to be Michael. He was starving for 30 days, but when the docs checked him out, they found he was totally fine. They just told him to eat more. After the docs left, Michael admitted he drank a ton of water before the checkup to bump up his weight. He was all set to leave if the docs told him to, but they didn't, and that kind of made him sad. Out here in the wild with no mirrors, Mike can only check his body condition through the video camera. He's lost a lot of weight, and his stomach's gotten all wrinkly. Tonight, he plans to keep trying to catch eels. Fishing needs bait, so Mike headed over to the bushes to look for worms. He found a bunch a few days ago, but today, he came up empty. No bait means slim chances of catching anything, which means slim chances of winning. Today, Michael didn't catch any fish again. Empty-handed, he returned to the shelter and saw a photo of his family. He couldn't hold back the tears anymore and decided to quit the competition to go back to his family. Michael's exit had been coming. He hadn't caught anything every time he went fishing. Maybe he just isn't cut out for fishing, or maybe he doesn't know the right bait to use. After Michael left, only two contestants remained. It's day 31 now. Gina checks her fishing traps every morning. The last two days, she hasn't caught anything, but luckily, she can handle the hunger. Today, she even built a new door for the shelter. Not that it's much use, just something to keep her busy. She's determined to win, even though there's no fish. She's still finding plenty of wild veggies to eat. Today, she made a pot of fish scraps stew. It's already fermented, but in the food-scarce wilderness, it still tastes amazing. Now, it's day 32, and recently, Mike hasn't had much luck. It's been all about starving, but driven by the desire for the final prize, he's still hanging in there. Besides fishing, Mike checks the traps daily, and every night, small animals show up. So, based on their movement, 
he rearranged the traps. Since the fish aren't biting, he's shifting his focus to hunting these animals. He planned to weave a new net, but then the wind picked up. The ropes he'd just managed to fix got all tangled again, so he had to take them back inside the shelter to keep working on them. Straightening them out is a huge job and takes a lot of time. Time quickly moved on to day 35. Mike came out with a big net he had spent two all-nighters weaving. He then set it up in the jungle, creating a much larger hunting trap. If any prey tripped the trigger, there was a good chance he could catch it. Catching something could easily keep him going for another 10 days. Just setting up the trap had exhausted him. It was really tough to get it right. In the middle of the night, Gina suddenly needed to pee and had no choice but to run outside. As she stepped out, she caught a small kangaroo. Gina really hit the jackpot, scoring some much needed protein. If Mike found out, he'd probably be so frustrated he'd quit the competition. Now wide awake, Gina got to work on her catch, removing the insides and skinning it. The little kangaroo had a lot of meat, enough to feed her for several days. Eating a feast in the final circle was like getting money handed to her. That night, Gina enjoyed grilling and eating the animal's liver as a midnight snack. By day 36, Gina was sitting by the shore, soaking up the sun without a care in the world. She still had a pile of meat back at the shelter. Finishing it might just win her the championship. Gina cut the leftover meat into small pieces to make smoked meat, which she figured could last her a month. On day 38, Mike hadn't had meat in a long while. If he didn't make a catch soon, he'd have to leave the competition. He checked the traps as usual, but they were still empty. Mike returned to the shelter. At midnight, he pulled out a photo of his family, looking at it for the first time, his resolve seeming to waver. By day 39, Gina was dealing with the leftover meat on the animal bones. I thought she might use the bones to make a delicious bone broth, but instead, she started gnawing on them directly. Seeing her eat so primitively, I couldn't help but be impressed. She was really cut out for surviving in the wild. On day 41, Mike just sat in the shelter, staring into space as it started to pour outside. His fishing and hunting traps had caught nothing. He had done his best to find food, but unfortunately, he hadn't caught anything in this final stretch. Not even one extra fish to help him last a few more days. While sorting out his traps, Mike unexpectedly found a worm. Worms are the best bait for fishing, giving him new hope. Mike decided to try fishing again. It was now or never. By day 42, Gina still had a ton of smoked meats left. She'd even made a small blanket out of kangaroo skin. At this point, Gina's chances of winning were close to 90%. If Mike couldn't catch any game soon, it looked like Gina was going to nab the championship. This season might see another female champion. After a good meal, Gina started missing her family. She had no idea how many competitors were left, but her longing for home grew stronger day by day. Would homesickness be Gina's downfall? Fast forward to day 48, Mike hadn't found any food for a long time. He was thinking about throwing in the towel, but every time he thought about quitting, a voice in his head urged him to keep going. That night, he went to check his fishing trap at the shore, and to his surprise, caught a trout. The timing couldn't have been better. It completely changed his mind about leaving. Mike made a pot of fish soup right away and was over the moon to have meat again. If this fish helped Mike hang on till the end, it was worth a million bucks. His confidence was back on track. By day 51, there were only two contestants left. Today was Mike's son's birthday. Although he couldn't be with his son, he made a birthday cake from mud on the shore, a sincere gesture. Mike was in good spirits. He believed that winning the prize money and providing a better life for his son was a greater expression of his love than just spending the birthday with him. Before coming here, Mike had gained about 19 kilos, which could potentially sustain him for 30 days without food. He had built a raft, made a fishing rod, and set traps in the jungle. Though he hadn't been successful in hunting, fortunately, he had caught quite a few eels. Mike had been working hard to get food, but just lacked a bit of luck. Recently, he had caught a lot of eels. His shelter was full of smoked eel meat, enough for about 10 days. Now, Mike ate half an eel daily to keep his body in a low metabolic state, 
worried that eating too much might speed up his metabolism. He fried a pan of eel for lunch. It tasted amazing. After eating, all he could think about was how much longer he had to stay. He had no idea how many were still in the game, but knowing the number would surely keep him going. On day 52, Gina was humming a song. Her food supplies were plentiful, so she didn't need to spend time hunting. As long as she didn't miss her family too much and kept a good mindset, she had a 90% chance of winning. These days, she enjoyed meat soup for breakfast and lived quite comfortably. Eating meat every day just isn't cutting it. Gina decided to go out and look for some green plants. She searched around her shelter and stumbled upon a snake. It wasn't very big, but at this point, the more protein, the better. Gina really wanted to catch it, but didn't have any tools with her. So she just thought about it, but didn't act. She wandered until evening and realized she was far from her shelter. Then the sky started thundering and soon enough, hail began to fall and the wind picked up. Mike's shelter couldn't withstand the fierce winds. It completely fell apart. His bedside collapsed and his blanket got soaked. It was clear he was in a rough spot. By day 55, it had been raining for three days straight. Luckily, Gina's shelter had a fire and was super sturdy. Now all she had to do was stay put in her shelter since she had plenty of food. She felt really grateful for building such a solid shelter earlier, which kept her safe through days of continuous rain. Having starved in the early days, Gina was a real comeback story. With the rain pouring outside, Gina couldn't just sit idle. She decided to keep upgrading her shelter by adding a fireplace to make it warmer. She tried building a stove with stones, but the stones were quite round, so she failed several times. On day 58, there was trouble on Mike's side. He smelled something off in the eel meat in his shelter. It was getting mushy, probably due to the humidity from the rainy days, causing the meat to spoil. He had been reluctant to eat it before, but now he had to deal with it fast. If Mike wasted the meat, he'd have no hope of winning. Back on day 24, he had made a smoker, but this time there was too much meat and it wouldn't fit. Mike just stewed a big pot of eel meat. Might as well have a feast tonight. But what should he do next? By day 59, it was a tug of war between Gina and Mike, seeing who could last the longest. The continuous rain made the competition even tougher. They had to stay in their shelters, relying on whatever food was left. In such crucial times, the shelters played a huge role. Gina kept thinking about the money she'd get feeling that's the right mindset to have. Life here was tough, and thinking positive thoughts helped her keep going. If loneliness and missing her family took over, she wouldn't last long. Finally, the rain stopped. Mike still had one eel left in his shelter. He sniffed the eel meat hundreds of times per minute, just to make sure it hadn't gone bad. Mike had about two days worth of food left. Day 60 rolled around and the water level finally dropped a bit. Fishing was getting tougher by the day. Mike was trying to cut down on how much energy he was using, so he decided to eat just two pieces of eel meat per meal. That was all the food he had left. He really had to savor every bite. By day 61, Mike was down to his last piece of eel. That was it for his food supply. Once that piece was gone, he'd be facing real hunger. He ate so carefully, practically licking the pot clean. In the middle of the night, it started pouring again. By the early hours of day 62, the water had risen about a meter, which gave Mike a glimmer of hope. He kept trying to find some bait to fish with, digging under dead wood, but he couldn't find anything useful. Wanting to win this challenge was what kept him going all this time. Day 64 hit, and it was Mike's 46th birthday. He had nothing to eat. The rain stopped and Gina couldn't wait to get out for a walk. She was also down to just a little bit of meat, and her health was getting worse. Plus, hunting was super tough now. She didn't know how much longer she could hold out. Today was medical checkup day. The doctor came by to check Mike's blood pressure and lungs. He was skin and bones. After learning the basics, the doctor told the crew that Mike's blood pressure was way too low. For his own safety, the crew told him he had to leave the competition. Mike had shown a lot of survival skills, more than Gina had. But at a crucial moment, Gina managed to catch a kangaroo, which helped her last until the end. Mike just had a bit of bad luck. 
But then again, luck is a part of strength, isn't it? Who can really say? With Mike out, Gina became the champion of this season's alone. But she had no clue. Day 67 came, and the doctor was there to check Gina's health. She thought it was just a routine checkup until the crew suddenly announced that she had won the challenge. She was the last one standing. Gina was in total disbelief at the sudden good news. And that wraps up everything from Alone Australia.